Okay, so we come to the most important thing uh, to say about stochastic gradient descent. If you remember anything uh, about stochastic gradient descent, I want you to remember the moral um, that I'm going to get to in this little video here. And it's the, um, the message is going to be all about the application of stochastic gradient descent in big data problems. So in big data problems, it's going to be cases uh, where this sum, right, the sum in this cost function uh, that you're trying to optimize uh, has got many terms in it. So big data uh, means a lot of terms uh, in that cost function. So I'm going to do this all on the board. So I'm, I'm going to leave, um, you know, this is where we got to with um, uh, the example uh, that we were computing before. Um, and in general, this is a, a general sort of picture uh, for stochastic to gradient descent. In general, the expectation of xk plus 1 take away the minimizer uh, is equal to, well, 1 minus 2 lambda if we have a quadratic, um, if we have some sort of um, sum of squared distances. Um, so 1 minus 2 lambda or 1 minus c lambda if you have some other power there. We'll just think of this as 2. Uh, but that scalar uh, times the expectation of xk minus um, x star. And so the point of stochastic to gradient descent is it, it works on these, uh, we apply it to these functions that are a sum of a large number of fi's, right, where the number of, um, where each fi corresponds to a different bit of data. And we'll say that's a relatively cheap computation, it'll take time t, right, and if, um, if I'm doing things, set things up right, that's probably not huge, um, but the total time, if I have a big data problem, if I have a large number of data points, m, um, then to calculate uh, the entire cost function requires you to add up, you know, m lots of that small computation t. Right? So to evaluate f of x, so to evaluate my cost function, requires some computation time mt, where m is the number of data points and t is the time it takes to evaluate uh, each, um, yeah, each, uh, um, each term in the cost function. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, um, let's just, for simplicity, we'll assume that uh, this is a one-dimensional problem in the sense that um, x star is just a scalar here, right? It's not a high-dimensional problem, but everything will scale um, similarly to higher-dimensional problems in that sense. Um, and then, so we're going to compare um, solve, finding this minimizer using something like golden section search, right, our most efficient direct search method, and then we'll compare it with this stochastic gradient descent we've just been analyzing. So let's do golden section first. So we'll write this here. So let's imagine finding the minimizer of this cost function f of x using the golden section search. So if you think back, if you can remember back to um, the, uh, our analysis of the golden section search, you know, the error so let's write the error here, which I'll call epsilon. You know, the error in after k steps of the golden section algorithm is essentially the, um, the length of this uh, interval, right? So we start off with some big interval, and then we reduce it by a golden proportion each time. And so after k steps, we've got a small, um, uh, we've got a small interval. And so it reduces uh, by the golden ratio, by the golden section each time, and you know, so the exact formula that we wrote down uh, was that the error, the width of the interval after k steps uh, was gamma k, where gamma is the golden ratio, uh, times b0 minus a0. Now, without loss of generality, let's assume that we're, we're going to scale this problem. Um, I'm just going to make this 1. It doesn't actually change anything. Um, you know, we can do that without loss of generality. So if I start with an interval that's of length 1, uh, then after k steps, the width of my interval, interval, the amount of error that I have, is like gamma to the power of k. Okay? So that means, so I can do that without loss of general, generality. So that means that after, k, um, that after k steps, this is my error, you know, I can use this to calculate what k is. So k is going to be uh, log of epsilon uh, over log of gamma, right? Um, now, um, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do the following uh, just because it's going to make uh, things look like, uh, uh, I'm going to redo this later with the stochastic gradient descent and I want things to look the same. I'll put a minus sign in front of each of these. 
which means that I get log of 1 over epsilon. Oh, 1 of gamma. Okay. Um, you know, that's, uh, that's a cosmetic change. The important thing here is that I know what the total compute is now. Right? So the total compute for the golden section algorithm to, f to find the minimizer to within an error of epsilon is going to be the number of iterations times the computation time for evaluating my function at each step. So what's the, um, each time I um, uh, uh, do my, um, each time I take a step, I need to evaluate f of x, right? So the total number of computations that I need to do is, you know, k times mt. So the number of uh, iterations, the number of steps that I take, and I do a function, one new function evaluation each time, it's actually k plus 1 here, but, you know, we'll put an approximately equal to, we'll say that k is large. And so now I can plug in, you know, 1 over gamma uh, is... Uh, 1 over the golden ratio, so I can actually calculate this. This log of 1 over um, log of 1 over gamma turns out to be about a half, 0.48, and I've got this mt times that log of 1 eps, log of 1 over epsilon. So that's the total compute time for my stochastic gradient. Uh, sorry, for my golden section search applied to this hypothetical 1D problem. Okay, let's do the same thing again now with stochastic gradient descent. We'll do that over here. I'll change colors just for fun. So what's the error after k steps uh, in stochastic gradient descent? Well, we calculated um, in the last video that the variance of stochastic gradient descent, you know, is roughly, it was lambda over lambda minus one in that problem. So the, uh, the variance is roughly um, approximately um, uh, uh, lambda, proportional to lambda. Um, so the, the, the error, if I take the standard deviation uh, as a measure of the error uh, after k steps, then, well, that error is going to be, you know, roughly root lambda is how that, um, uh, is, is how that error goes, is what the standard deviation goes like. And so that means uh, that lambda is going to be approximately equal to epsilon squared in this. So, okay, so what does my error look like? Well, I can use this, uh, I can use this formula here. Um, so after, after uh, k steps, you know, my, um, my error goes uh, as 1 minus uh, 2 lambda, and lambda is equal to epsilon squared. Uh, so, um, let me write the, uh, the standard deviation. I don't know, we'll just, we'll, uh, we'll do this. Um, so the expected value of this difference here um, kind of goes as 1 minus 2 times lambda, 2 times epsilon squared to the power of k. I'm setting this original difference to be equal to 1 without loss of generality here. So that's sort of how my error scales um, over time. So I can solve this as well. So just as I did for the golden section search, I can now solve this for little k. It's just a matter of taking uh, logs again. And that's equal to, uh, what is it, log of epsilon uh, over log of 1 minus 2 epsilon squared. And now a little bit of a uh, little bit of trickery here. Uh, well, log of epsilon using the same um, cosmetic change as I did over here. Log of epsilon is equal to negative one of uh, a negative log of one over epsilon. And log of one minus you know this small number here, right? If this um, uh, one minus uh, two epsilon squared, uh, log of one minus two epsilon squared. Uh, if that's sort of sufficiently small, then this will be approximately equal to just you know, this. So as long as uh, x is small, log of 1 minus x uh, is approximately equal to negative x. So this actually comes out to be something like um, negative 2 epsilon squared. So that's my, that's my number of steps 
for stochastic gradient descent versus um, golden section search. So let's think about the total compute here. So the total compute um, for Uh, the total compute for stochastic gradient descent, so this is the number of steps that I take, and what do I do with stochastic gradient descent? Each time I take a step, I take one data point and I evaluate an fi, right? So each time I take a step, I do a computation that's of time t. So the total compute here is k, little k, times t. What's little k times t? Well, that's approximately e can be equal to k, uh, sorry, t times this. So that is, there's a half here. Uh, I've got an e 1 over epsilon, so an epsilon to the negative 2. Uh, I've got this t, and then I've got my log of 1 over epsilon again. I've got that. And here is the whole point, because now I'm going to compare this compute time with that compute time, all right? So these all look similar, all right? So I've got a t, I've got a t, I've got about a half, I've got about a half, I've got a log of one over epsilon, log of one over epsilon. So the difference between these is that the stochastic gradient intercept's got an epsilon, one over epsilon squared, uh, and my uh, golden search, the most efficient direct search, uh, has, got a, um, has got an m. So really the difference is that compared to that. So let's write out, let's write out the last bit. So the thing that I'm interested in looking at here is the, um, let's put this back up so that you can see, I can keep my compute times there. Uh, so I want the, uh, the SGD time divided by the golden search time. And that's equivalent to uh, little kt, little kt over big kmt, and they're going to come out to be approximately equal to epsilon to the negative 2 divided by m. Can you see that? Good, because it's important. So the ratio of these two times uh, is epsilon, is 1 over epsilon squared uh, over m. That's the important thing, right? So what are these numbers, right? So if you've got small data and you want to be very, very accurate, right? So if M's uh, a small number here, then, you know, these might be comparable. This, might, this number ratio might be close to one. But if I have a big data problem, let's say, um, you know, I've got a million data points or something like that, that's not big data. Right? But that might be, if I've got a million data points, then m is equal to uh, 10 to the 6. I'm actually going to erase, I'll put this, I'll write this down here so that we can see it. Epsilon squared uh, over m. So then the big data regime, you know, m might be 20, 10 to the 6 or more. And let's say that what I want here is I want an accuracy um, that's like, you know, if I wanted um, uh, my error to be, say, 0.1, I right, pick a, a, a value that's, that might be good enough, then what's the size of this? Well, you know, that's 10 to the 2, right? So um, as data gets big, and this is just a prescribed accuracy here, but the time that it takes for SGD to run like, um, as M gets larger and larger and larger, is just so much smaller, it gets, becomes orders of magnitude uh, smaller than the time taken for golden search or any other sort of deterministic scheme um, to work here. And as M gets larger and larger, you know, in big data we're talking about mi uh, billions, um, uh, millions, billions of data points here. Um, and so this, this blows out, and so this can, you can get very, very accurate results um, even for um, uh, even for very large data problems, and that's the whole you know that little expression there is the whole point um, of stochastic gradient descent. This trick, 
this k times t, right, means that um, as, as m gets very, very large, as that gets large, um, stochastic gradient descent becomes overwhelmingly more efficient and actually allows us to do machine learning, allows us to do, to do optimization um, uh, for big data. So just to show you uh, that one more uh, time, here's one of the, you know, this is um, uh, one of the establishing papers um, for optimization uh, in big data machine learning. And if you go on, uh, into it and look at, um, you know, this section on stochastic versus batch optimization. So batch optimization means deterministic sort of schemes uh, like this here. You know, they actually do a comparison of, you know, the, um, the accuracy or the, the loss function uh, for stochastic gradient descent versus something like our Fletcher-Reeves algorithm. This is this BFGS algorithm. So a deterministic scheme like the conjugate gradient one we talked about a few videos ago. And as I do more and more iterations here, you see the stochastic gradient descent converges very, very quickly and much more um, the errors uh, for, for reasonable numbers of data points um, is, is, is much lower, much, much quicker. And that's the generic sort of curve that you get. So you can do um, optimization for big data fast. Now, if you want super high accuracy, right, you'll see that if we zoom way in on this, the blue curve after a very long time gets slightly more accurate than uh, the red curve does. The deterministic scheme eventually outperforms um, the stochastic gradient descent, but it takes a hell of a long time to get there and the improvement uh, is marginal. So that, um, you know, that is the whole story. You know, that comes down to if I want to have an epsilon that's very, very small here, I can uh, wait a huge amount of time. Or if I want to make this number greater than one, then I have to make epsilon very, 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 very small um, there. And then I can eventually, eventually get there. But otherwise, if I have um, large data, of, um, not even that big, but for, uh, big data, um, the stochastic gradient descent is just the way to go. Um, and it is just uh, overwhelmingly more efficient. And you can't really overemphasize um, how this has made modern machine learning possible. So it's really, really important.